All right, MC Bravado, I picked up on because I've always had this belief, this like underlying belief in my ability that I just rap better than just about anyone. When you're recording songs on like a fucking $50 microphone and an 8-track and you call yourself something like that, it, it stands for that like unfound arrogance, that like false air of, it's kind of a joke. Um, and I always get a kick out of that because I say, you know, a lot of really wild stuff. I think it's kind of funny. I'd say I really started with early Nas, early Biggie, early J. I would say the album that made me fall in love with hip hop, the score from the Fugees, just because I, Lauryn Hill, like, that shit crazy talented, you know? And that shit crazy literally. <laughs> One of the dudes in my group, Militant Marksman, he started rapping early, like probably when we were in like sixth grade, something like that. And he, you know, I actually got him listening to hip hop and he kind of opened up the idea. Once I saw a friend of mine doing it, you know, made me think maybe I could, I could do that. Cause he started recording and it sounded pretty good and he was pretty good. So as much as I loved the music, I figured why, you know, why wouldn't I go that route? So I, I went to like, these battles, you know, I, I really, in high school, I'd start freestyling and making fun of people when I was drunk. And people are like, oh, you know, it's funny, it's good. I do stupid joke songs about girls I didn't like, you know, all that kind of shit. In fact, my ex ex girlfriend, I did some foul shit, you know, what a track. So that's all started early, you know what I mean? And I still, I still feel a little bit bad about it, but it, it kind of helped springboard my popularity in a way in high school, so sorry about that. But then I went, I kind of got persuaded to go to these battles. And when I, I'd be winning battles, um, against older dudes and people that were more experienced and I'd be like half in the bag drunk and not preparing at all. So that kind of gave me the idea. People started getting my ear and they're like, these dudes take this shit seriously. You're like wiping the floor with them. Why don't you start, you know? So then I started writing, started recording with Marksman. Um, C Nature, another dude in my group kind of came into the fold. Um, he was rapping also all that time. We all cross paths in the battle scene, cross paths recording. And um, yeah, that's how the rest of my group too, McNasty, No Name, we all kind of formed organically over that, that time period. Cypher Junkies came together, I want to say, by the time I was maybe 18, 19. But, you know, we went through our phase of just fucking around too much, drinking too much, too much extracurriculars. We, we've kind of been in it, quite frankly. Um, to counter that that idea in terms of you're either in it for the money or you're you know you're lying don't agree um we've been in it for the love of the sport for a long time that's why we were doing these basement style recordings because we just like to rap we like to get drunk and rap we like to perform we like to record songs um only the last couple years you know i think it was out of the fact that we'd see people either we used to fuck with or like individuals that weren't quite as talented as us in other circles um, doing well, it kind of started getting us a little angry, like what's separating them from us. And they would always have really good production, really good recording, so that got me on the, the swing that I need to step it up and start working with producers and recording studios. And Prior to that, me and this dude, Janaza, shout outs to um, Janaza, we used to fuck around with music on my computer mic. Um, and that was my, my first mixtape, you know, like just fucking around like that. And then we did a, more of a studio style mixtape at Marksman's called It's About Fucking Time. That was like my first real title because people begged us to put stuff out and we finally put stuff out. And then from there, I did my own mixtape. It was called Quality Over Quantity. It had 28, <laughs> it had 28 songs on it. So there again was me being like an arrogant prick with like the backhanded title. It was fucking 28 songs. Obviously like quantity was there too and quality. So I put that out. I recorded, mixed that down, all that shit myself. Me and my dude Ward again. But once again, the quality wasn't great. I was rapping over other people's beats and it was kind of just clear that I couldn't really get that far doing that. So when I was in college, towards the tail end, I met this dude, he ended up being in my fraternity, this dude Devin, Skitch, we call him. He had a studio, you know? So he's like, your sound quality is what's holding you back. But that's when I got used to that idea of, I gotta pay for the product if it's gonna be top notch. So I started networking with different producers, mostly on SoundClick, mostly online and was able to put together a quality product, but the Iliad through like 
the stupid legal trouble I got into and, you know, the personal battles I went through took longer than expected. It took a few years. Uh, towards the tail end of the process, I filled in some features with underground artists that I was listening to for a long time. That was kind of like a culminating thing. Matt Lethal produced a track on the album, rapped on the album. In my opinion, one of the most talented people in hip hop, so that was huge. Then I had Concept on there. He was a dude I grew up with, Brown Bag All Stars, all that. He's he's doing really well. He did a track with Royce, his album, you know, did really well on an independent level. So he's on there. Copyright produced and rapped on a track. Um, so that, you know, that's where the Iliad went. I ended up, the album art and the idea of the concept, something I was real proud of. Again, I ended up putting out 17 songs. It has a kind of a linear progression, different moments in life. I, I kind of try to go with like how I got into hip hop in the beginning and the growth, personal growth and something wrong in the first track. And then the next couple songs are intentionally kind of silly songs and then I progressively build into heavier stuff. I don't see no reason.